wow, they actually did it. Wizards actually did it. <laughs> Stacks back. I got to say, I didn't expect this from Wizards. We all knew that Omnath was the problem. We all knew that, you know, we wanted it banned. Everybody was saying they wanted it banned, but I didn't actually think Wizards would ban it because of certain monetary reasons. <laughs> but they actually did. And I think that is because Wizards saw the writing on the wall. Um, it's not going to be until 2021 when, until we get a new standard set coming in and, you know, pushing the metal forward. So between now and January, mid-January, that's a long time to go um, getting beat up by Omnath decks. And uh, I think that Wizards saw the writing on the wall for that. It's people were going to start leaving. People are going to start leaving the game, going to stop playing standard. Standard play on arena is going to tank. They're not going to be selling anything on arena. They're not going to be selling anything in paper magic. So Omnath, looking into that looking glass into the future, <laughs> he he was destroying magic single-handedly or with his forehands. <laughs> so I think Wizards, they, they know that. And um, as much as I know that they would hate it to, to ban the Chase Mythic out of their most recent set, they just had to. Um, what's even more disturbing though is the other two bands that came with it, right? So now we got Escape to the Wilds band and we got Lucky Clover band. A lot of people wanted Lucky Clover band too. Um, I think Lucky Clover should not have ever been printed to begin with because the ev adventure mechanic is already a card advantage type mechanic anyway. So um, I, I said this in conversation with somebody on Facebook just yesterday. If just speaking in terms of the mechanic, right? So if I'm playing a regular fair deck and I have seven cards in my hand, I have seven cards in my hand. Um, if my opponent is playing an adventure deck, if they have seven cards in their hand and they're all adventure spells, they essentially have 14 cards in their hand. So when you look at it that way, you can, you can see the obvious of why adventure did not need to have a, a artifact, a two drop artifact, mind you, that is Hard to interact with with cards that are currently available to you in the card pool of standard currently. Um, it should just not have been created. It should not have been printed. Um, they should have had the foresight to know that, hey, this is not a good idea for a mechanic that it's already it's already card advantage. So you you throw Lucky Clover onto it, and you just get insane value at that point. So that that's pretty hard to overcome when you're playing a fair deck. Um, Escape to the Wilds got the chop. Uh, but this is all disturbing to me because now you have five cards in Throne of Eldraine that are banned. So, I mean, you got you got Fires of Invention banned. That's a rare. You got Once Upon a Time banned. That's a rare. Escape to the Wilds is a rare. Lucky Clover is an uncommon. And then you got Oko, which is Chase Rare of the set, um, Mythic Rare. So, I know Paper Magic isn't really a... Uh, as big right now as it used to be, it, it's you know kind of on a hiatus. We don't we don't really we want we want Paper Magic to come back. We hope that it'll come back. I think that it will come back when you know the state of affairs in the world start to return back to a state of normalcy. Um, but if Paper Magic was in full swing right now, buying El Drain would just be it would just be dumb. It would just be a loss because anything that you would want to to open or need to open. Probably is banned right now from Eldraine. So um, as far as paper magic value-wise for Eldraine, it's been tanked with with these additional two bannings. And um, Zendikar's um, value now has taken a, a hit because the Chase Mythic is now banned. Um, I, I think this is really disturbing because, for one, I remember the article that Wizards released when they said that uh, Eldraine... The Eldraine set is the power level that they want to establish for standard moving forward. <laughs> but but they have five cards in that set band now. Um, so that stands the reason that the set is um, very powerful. And if that is the metric that they want to use moving forward, if that's the power level that they want to maintain in standard moving forward, then you should expect to continue to see these bands, um, which is not good for the game. Bands in standard are at an all-time high. Um, keep in mind, a lot of cards that were in standard just rotated not too long ago. Um, you know, 
uh, agent of treachery, wilderness reclamation, those cards just ro rotated out of standard. So if we hadn't just had a rotation, we'd be at double digit numbers um, just about for standard bands, which is, is not good. Um, I think it would be double digit numbers because Little Teferi, he was, he was banned too. So yeah, we'd be in double digit numbers for standard bands right now, which has never happened in the history of standard. Um, that is, that is horrible. That is horrible. Standard is supposed to be the set to welcome everybody into the game competitively, casually, whatever. Um, that's supposed to be the intro set. Um, so things should not be getting banned um, to the degree that they're getting banned in standard. We used to not have standard bans at all. Now, now it's just becoming, it's becoming a normal occurrence. They're happening. You might as well say at this point every other month but you know pretty soon it'll be every other week you know at the rate at the rate it's going so um that's very disturbing um i think at some point wizards had adopted a print now ban later philosophy and that is a very dangerous road to be on that's the road that we seem to be on now and that's a road that i hope that we get off very soon because if it continues down this road, people are going to start leaving the game. Um, we've had a massive influx of people coming into the game um, due to arena. And now, you know, with the state of affairs and it going on in the world, people are stuck at home and more people are, are turning to arena more than ever. And these bannings don't affect people as bad as they do in paper. Um, because when, when things get banned in paper, people lose, they lose money. Okay. When, Things get banned on Arena, you get your wild cards back and you can just go ahead and build something else, craft other things. But it still hurts because when people want to play with a card, there's a lot of people who may spend money trying to acquire cards, acquire wild cards or acquire uh, specific cards on Arena. And then they get those cards or they, then there's people that don't spend money and they grind and they, they, they do dailies and they get their wild cards and all that stuff. And they craft stuff and they, they, they work hard to build a deck that they really want to play. And then if, if it's key cards ends up getting banned, it can be demoralizing because then it's like, well, I want to build this because it's powerful and I, I want to play it, but I have to worry about, is it going to get banned? And then it's just going to be a waste a waste of time for me putting in all that effort to build the deck. If it's just going to turn around and get banned. And then I'll have to go back to the drawing board and figure out what do I want to play from there? And it could just be very frustrating, very disheartening. So, it's two different sides of the equation. You know, with paper, you're losing money. And with arena, a lot of people, you, they, 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 they lose out on the time that they spend trying to craft these decks and craft these cards and play. So um, people are going to start to get this sense of, well, I'm just going to back off of magic. You can even look at now with, it's kind of like a double-edged sword, right? Because when they release these broken cards into the game, all these broken decks happen and then people get peed off and then they stop playing arena and they start backing off of arena. A lot of content creators, we stopped making decks and, you know, doing different videos because you couldn't play anything while I'm that locus of creation decks were running around. You couldn't play anything. Like I have tons of, of deck ideas and, and decks built, but I couldn't display them because they would just get obliterated by I'm that. And I know a, a few other content creators who are the same way. Um, shout out to Joey Moss, he a uh, bad boy gaming. And he, he touched on it himself that he has a lot of decks that he's been fooling around with, but he just could not play them because of Omnath. So um, yeah, it, it's, it's a double-edged sword. You let these broken cards come into the game and it, it just holds his foot down on everything else that anybody might want to play. And then you ban it and you know, people that have it in paper, they lose money. People on arena, you know, that, that were playing it, they're mad because they can't continue to play it. You know, so it's just best to avoid letting these letting these types of cards come into the game at all. So a lot of people, you know, they ask, you know, well, what is it? What is the problem? Why do we keep having all these broken cards? You know, what's what's the the source of the brokenness, right? So I've touched on this all the time. I, I touched on this going all the way back to, you know, when the companion situation happened, um, you know, when before the companions got nerfed, um, I, I had been saying then that 
you know, it seems like to me, it feels like to me that, you know, we all knew the eighth card situation with the companion was a problem, the free eighth card, that was an issue. Um, but the greater issue with majority of these banners, if you look at what they all have in common, um, the free mana, free mana, cheating on mana, uh, free cards, it, 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 that seems to be the source of the problem to me. Um, free spells, free, free mana, free cards. Okay. I'm not saying that those things don't have a place in the game. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that they need to be better controlled. They need to be less broken than what they are. So when you got on that, who you you get four four mana, four free mana just for for playing land. That's something that you naturally do in the game. Um, <laughs> that's a problem. Just like you know when you got the the uh, uh, field of the dead, it's giving you free zombies just for doing what you naturally do in the game which is play lands that's a problem there needs to be some design behind these cards where you have to work for the things that you're trying to get to and laying lands is not work to get to anything it's not you're not earning anything it's just you're doing something that you naturally do in the game and you're getting this extreme benefit over your opponent to where if they're playing a fair deck they they can't compete so cheating on mana, cheating on spells, you know, free card draw, all that stuff. I don't, that, that seems to be the major issue to me. When you really think about the game, what is the, the, the one balancer, the only true balancer of magic? Because magic cards can do all sorts of things. It, it's whatever wizard's imagination is. Whatever they can imagine, they can put it onto a card. So a card has the potential to do anything. So how do you balance a game like that? The only true balancer is the mana resource. That that was put into the game as there's a reason you can only play one land per turn. There's a reason that each land only well, majority of the time, unless it's a special special type of land, majority of the times lands only give you one mana. It's it's to limit your ability to be able to play in-game large type spells, um, things that can just get you extreme advantage over your opponent. The more advantage something gives you, the more mana it typically should cost. And if all your mana is just free, or you can just cast everything for free, or you know everything that you play draws you a card, then you're never down any resources. You don't have to rely on, you don't have to be hindered by the limitations of the mana system that was implemented into the game from the beginning times of magic. Um, there's a reason why Black Lotus and all the Moxen, they're restricted in their formats and in and, and, and the only format they're legal in and they're banned in every other format. Free mana. This isn't something that just came around, just came about into the game of magic and said, oh, wait a minute. We think maybe, hmm, is free mana a problem? No, we, we've been known that free mana is an issue in the game of Magic. So you have to limit its availability. Not saying it doesn't belong in Magic. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that Wizards needs to be smart. They need to be smarter about when they want to utilize that particular archetype in the game of free mana. So... I don't know what it's going to take. I don't know whose fault it is. Um, I know a lot of things in, that are happening in Magic right now are profit-driven. So they want to print these big flashy things that are going to get people to, to talk and go out and spend money. You know, they got their quotas. They have to make a certain amount of money. You know, Papa Hasbro has, the, has his foot on Wizard's throat and they have to produce. They have to produce, produce, produce. And I get all that, you know, that's why we got an oversaturation of product right now. We got products coming out the wazoo left and right. You know, you got the walking dead, you got, you know, all these different secret layers coming out. You got all these different expansions of, um, you know, master sets and, 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 and everything, you know, and you got commander cards being shoved into to standard product, you know, and I get all that, you know, it's for profits. They got to make money. I'm not, I'm not disputing that, but somebody at some level, of game design and game testing, um, somebody in a position of authority needs to care about 
the direction of the game or there won't be a game. And I know people have been saying they've been talking about the death of Magic forever and forever and ever. But the road that they're going down right now with just print now, ban later, that eventually will kill the game of Magic. And I don't want the game of Magic to die. I, I love I've loved Magic for 27 years. So I don't want it to go anywhere. And that's why I'm trying to speak out on my platform to help address what the issue is. So free mana, free card draw, free just big blasts, get huge advantage on the board. That that stuff needs to really be dialed down. They need to take that down several notches <laughs> if they want the game to survive. I don't understand why everything that ramps you mana now draws you a card. For instance, like back in the in the old days, if I played a rampant growth. I play the rampant growth. I'm down a card. I fetch up a land. I put a land into play. Now you got growth spiral, which it draws you a card and puts a land into play. You got Euro, who draws your card, puts a land into play. You got Omnath, who you you he resolves. He draws a card. Um, you got Explore, draws your card, puts a land into play. All of this turbo ramp that's going on. That's if you're not playing ramp and generating crazy amounts of mana to keep up with your, your opponent who's likely playing lots of ramp and lots of cantrips, drawing lots of cards, you can play all the removal and spells you want, but you'll run out of resources and they won't because they everything they're playing has so much value. So Omnath, we, we've stated from the start, he's, he's value, he's instant value because he replaces himself. All he has to do is, is resolve. He replaces himself. So... Stuff like that, they, they really need to pay attention to. But the free mana, free casting, that's, that stuff really needs to be dialed down. That That is what's killing the game. Yeah, Oko, he was mechanically broken. Teferi, he stopped interaction in the game, which just wasn't fun. So things like that can happen. I mean, I'm not, I'm not advocating for them to happen. But I would, I would rather for Wizards to, you know, try things within reason and then them not work and then have to maybe ban one or two cards versus just throw all kinds of stuff out there that gives free mana and free spells and free cards and and then you know once it oversaturates the meta let's just go ahead and ban it then that's not healthy it's not healthy for anybody so so wizards really needs to come to terms with themselves they need to ask themselves do they want to take the blue pill and stay in wonderland and continue to make all of this crazy brokenness and drive people to, out of the game drive the community down drive people out of the community um, make people turn away to other games or do they want to take the red pill and wisen up and see the reality for what it really is and what they've been doing and evaluate the best ways to fix it moving forward um, which is to not let overly crazy brokenness into the game because it's, it's really not fun I mean, you look at, I know a lot of people on social media have that have been not playing Magic just because of Omnath in recent weeks. Just myself and other content creators, uh, we have not been making content showing new decks because you couldn't, you couldn't play anything against Omnath. So a deck like that, a card like that should not come into the game. It makes it unhealthy. It makes it unfun for everybody. Lots of decks that I had put together when Zendikar came out, but Omnath took over so quickly that I, I quickly realized that I cannot display these decks because they can't they can't compete with Omnath. So I mean, <laughs> what am I gonna do? Just make content and just show my my decks getting obliterated by Omnath? And and I'm one of the 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 most unique brewers out there, right? The whole premise of my channel, um, the whole foundation of it is is has been based on from the start of of playing off meta decks right so that's one of my hobbies i take very seriously is how to brew decks that get around current meta decks and anytime we're in a situation where i'm telling you that <laughs> there's very little that you can do to get around an omnath deck or any deck that's currently dominating in standard then it has some value to that statement okay i'm not a pro player but i've been brewing decks for 27 years and I'm pretty efficient at it. I'm pretty efficient at creating off-meta decks that can compete. And when I tell you that 
a top deck that's currently just overrunning and dominating a, a certain meta. There's very little you can do about it. <laughs> Trust me, I've looked at all angles to come to that conclusion that there's very little you can do about it. So, and I'm not the only one who came to that conclusion because every every pro player was almost was playing Omnath. <laughs> the ones that weren't playing Omnath, I think that there may have been something going on there where they told that the, those particular pro players or told them collectively and said, hey, we can't have everybody playing Omnath. We need somebody to take one for the team. We need a few people to take one for the team and play something different. Because I think that may have been the situation. I think everybody would have been playing Omnath if, if that wasn't the situation. Because Omnath is just that dominant. So it's gone now. We're going to move forward. We're going to, we're going to dive into some new decks. I will be displaying some new decks. Um, you can look forward to rogues and and you know control and and aggro taking over or attempting to take over now uh mill is going to probably be a big thing but i've been pushing mill I've, I've been an advocate for mill as we all know but um i'm excited to dive into some some of these new decks now and, and dive into a wide open meta because this meta is definitely going to be wide open now um that omnath is gone like, there's going to be a lot of people playing rogues. Don't get me wrong. The, the, the deck flockers, they're out there. You're not going to be able to stop those people. There's people that just don't want to think for themselves. And they're just going to flock to whatever the next best deck is. So, you can be prepared to see a lot of rogues. Rogues was probably, I would want to say, the second best deck to Omnath. Um, so, be prepared to see a lot of rogues. But fear not. I will provide solutions for those. <laughs> Go ahead, comment down below, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I will see you all next time.